give interviews and he's very camera shy. In fact, this seems to be the only time he's been photographed by the press. And getting to the bottom of his business dealings has also been difficult. The money paid to agents on transfers is often a closely guarded secret. The potential for controversy means football doesn't welcome nosy journalists. Manchester United get very nervous if you just turn up outside a training ground without an appointment. Hey, mate. What's that, mate? Sorry? Phone Dai as soon as possible. Fine. Fine who's that? Dai Law. Press up. Oh, right. Well, just to film out here? Yes. Sorry about really, that. Really, mate? So Alex Ferguson used to have a very low opinion of football agents. His comments on agents include there's a rat race and the rats are winning. They've all seen the gravy train and they want to jump on. So what did he think when his son decided to become an agent? But they must have made the best of it because in 2001, Jason was involved in one of the biggest United deals yet. Japstam had fallen out with Sir Alex and was leaving United and Jason's company had a piece of the action. This was a secret transfer. No one knew what really happened. What we did know is that an estimated 1.6 million was made by agents in the deal. It was known that Jason's company Elite was somehow involved, but what was their role? I set out to get to the bottom of it, but how? Jason Ferguson hardly ever speaks to the press. He nearly always refuses requests for interviews. But for the first time, I managed to get Elite to speak on the record about a United deal. I got through to director Francis Martin. At first, he didn't want to talk. Well, at the moment, it's like Jason's, Jason's our spokesman for the company at the moment, and uh, any like press or anything that was it's been done by him. It was a long and difficult conversation, lasting over an hour, but I eventually got Elite's version of events for the first time. They were paid by Lazio to approach United and ask if Stan was available. Yeah, that was the first, that was the first deal that we did. You know, so, uh, and that was, at the time, was a new company, new start. Um, we asked the question, the deal got done. He went on to explain once more that Lazio paid Elite to ask United about Stam's availability. Lazio asked us, that's the thing. We didn't ask, it wasn't us selling the player. We were asked by Lazio to get the player. So according to Francis Martin, Lazio paid Elite their share of the estimated £1.6 million to ring Manchester United and ask about Jap Stam. Seems like a lot of money for a phone call. Is that the whole story? There's a theory that Elite were in possession of a piece of very valuable information. Yap Stam was available for sale from Manchester United. All right. Elite were able to sell this information to Lazio. But if this was the case, could that very lucrative information have come from Jason's father? I could accept the elite version of events until I checked my records. But I soon discovered a major problem with their explanation. A transcribed interview that had been carried out with Peter Kenyon, United's then chief executive, revealed an interesting fact. He said United have never spoken with Elite in connection with the Stan deal. So if Kenyon is not mistaken, what was Francis Martin talking about? And if Elite didn't speak to United, what did Lazio pay them for? I went to Holland to meet Jap Stam's agent to see if he could give me some answers. During the, the Stam transfer, you had no contact with Jason? No. And no contact with his... I've never dealt with Jason. You had no contact with his no. company, no. Elite? No. And did anyone at Lazio that you spoke to, anyone, no. mention either Jason or his company? Never. So isn't it strange that Lazio were paying them and they didn't mention it to you? If Lazio has paid them, it, it might be strange, but I don't know if they have paid them. But is it normal that they... That can, you, can you prove that they paid them? We know they paid them, yeah. Yeah? We know they paid Elite. Sounds strange. Stan's agent wasn't privy to all the negotiations. The only person who could have more answers is the former Lazio president. But he's currently in jail, and therefore a bit hard to get hold of. So how much were Elite paid by Lazio? The Italian club had never paid them in full. But what fee had Elite originally arranged? I asked Francis Martin. I had a suspicion it was in the region of half a million. So I put it to him. Was it over £500,000? I can't confirm that one. So Elite were due from Lazio a fee of hundreds of thousands of pounds for a role which is very difficult to establish. 
but there was more to come from the transfer. One of Jason's closest business associates, Mike Morris, was also paid on a deal. He's pretty camera shy. This is the only press picture available. Although, unusually, he was caught on film at the stamp transfer. There he is, hidden behind a plant. Morris is a controversial figure. His recent transfer deals and close business links with Jason and Elite have made headlines this year. It was always thought that Lazio had paid him for his work on the deal. But thanks to my conversation with Francis Martin, I discovered that Morris had been paid by Manchester United. To those within football, this is a shocking revelation. Why did Morris need to be paid by United to sell Stan? Isn't it an easy job? He's a top international defender. Why did it require Manchester United to pay out hundreds of thousands? Manchester United could not justify paying any money to any agent, really, to sell Japstar. I mean, officially, they didn't want to sell Japstar. So why should they pay an agent to do that? Two weeks ago, we put this to United. This week, they admitted it. They'd paid Morris £750,000. So let's get this straight. For Jap Stan, a world-class international, to move from United to another club, it takes one payment to the manager's son's company and oh. another payment to the manager's son's business partner. Ah. For Mike Morris and Jason Ferguson, it was payday. United might be able to pay £750,000 to an agent on one deal, but that kind of money is a dream in the lower divisions. <laughs> York City are one of the poorest clubs in the Football League. The fans rescued them from bankruptcy in 2003 and now run the show. But short of funds, the club fell out of the Football League for the first time in their history this season. I went to their final home match. One of the deals we looked at involved a payment to an agency uh, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. What difference would that amount of money make to, to York City? Well, hundreds of thousands of pounds would, would be beyond our wildest dreams. I mean, it cost us 500,000 pounds to save this football club. I just think it, it just highlights the huge, enormous gap there is between the, the events and goings on in the in the Premier League to, to this kind of level. It's, it's just, we're miles apart. United hoped their admission over the Morris fee would put an end to damaging revelations concerning the Stam deal. But we found new evidence, which raises serious questions about Jason's role. Questions not answered by Manchester United this week. It centres on the issue of licences. United said this week that they complied with all the FIFA rules that govern the game. These rules stipulate that Players and clubs must use licensed agents. Abuse of the rules by an agent can result in a fine or suspension. Abuse of the rules by a football club can result in a ban on football activity. I asked Francis Martin about this issue. I knew that Jason Ferguson had never had a license. Surprisingly, Francis was happy to discuss it. He confirmed that Jason Ferguson had never had such a license. Despite this, on the stand deal, Francis made it clear to me that Jason had done all the work and he hadn't been involved. 